Lots in they shot me again. Lots in fiord me again. I don't they give them since nineties and I go give them again. Make them talk. I know they hear them again. What up guys? It's your boy Victor AD. I want you all to go stream my new song on Boom Play or look for it's out there. Boom. Stream, download, do whatever you want to do with it, but please don't steal it. Ladies and gentlemen! Hi Victor, thanks for joining us on the convo. How are you feeling today? I'm good, I'm feeling great, excited. And you look so clean and sharp. What um, inspires your sense of dressing? Uh, just because things are, yeah. I, I, first of all, I make them up in my head and I'll be like, okay, this is what I want to hear. So, no stylist. Okay, that's cool. I'm talking about your music. Did growing up in Kirikiri inspire your kind of sound? Uh, I think it should be growing up in the ghetto, like uh, from a humble background, not just Kirikiri, because I actually did some, a few years in, I did a few years in Kirikiri, same at Jangbadi, then moved to Wari and all that. So it has been like a ghetto scene, ghetto scene before 2017 or 2018. Yeah. Okay, so what was your first introduction into music? Uh, you mean professionally or...? Um, not professionally really, actually, but like when did you feel you were going to be a musician? Okay, uh, I felt that while I was very young, but uh, I, th I think the time I had, that, the time it was more effective was when I was in secondary school. So I was actually singing while my CRS teacher was, was uh, trying to, was giving lectures and all that. So then they called me and she called me and she was like okay no problem now since you know how to sing very well you come out and sing that song you've been you've been humming or you've been singing so then i did and when i did instead of her it was supposed to be like a punishment and maybe give me some few whips later after singing then everybody was sharing me up and she was like oh, oh, oh nice nice ah, i think you should take music seriously so the whole conversation moved from being a bad boy that was singing that was disturbing in school to yeah you get my point so, okay, so how, how will you describe the kind of music you make? Okay, I think it's, a, it's more like an Afro street pop vibe. Uh, so, basically, it's just for the streets, mostly for the streets. Okay, so your creative process, how, what, what inspires you when, when, when you want to write a song or when you're in the studio about to record? What, what's that vibe that um, inspires you? Making a song, making a song for me is actually spiritual because uh, most of the time I get to vibe and just uh, maybe hum or drop few lines, and the next minute I just forget everything. So most of the time, when I want to make a song, I just get my phone or get a recorder and start recording it. Or sometimes my manager do that for me. They'll be like, "Okay, we got, we have to record this right because who knows if this guy talk these things finish, if you don't remember them again, then I would have to, then I'll go back to it." So. That's like the new so process. So most, most people knew you when you appeared on the song Motivate with Erida. Yeah, and Motivation, sorry. Was that the first, uh, was that your first official uh, feature? Uh, first official feature, yeah. yeah or like, it. was that your breakout song? or? That, that, that was like a breakout song for me. But I did like uh, an underground one from Big Ayu to Joe and some little, little ones. Okay, and can you, how, how did Motivate come about? Okay, uh, I did a song motivation, with... Motivation, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Motivation, how Motivation came about, I did a song with, uh, with a friend of mine back then, and he, his name is T. West. So we did a song titled Shake Their Leg. Then after then, every guy jumped on the song, on that same song, and every guy was like, I will be this guy with take cross. According to him, that was what he told me. So I met every guy at the club a few weeks before then, but every guy never knew I was the same person that did the chorus. Then he was like, then TS was like, ah, are that same boy we do chorus for you now, for where you sing for club, where you go meet, the way you now to the freestyle. I say, ah, wow, okay, no problem. Then he hit me up and he was like, ah, Victor, it's paper boy. I have, a, I have a beat for you and I want you to vibe on it. So yeah, he sent it to me and then from there everything started. So will you say that was the beginning, motivation? Yeah, motivation was actually like the beginning of the journey. Not like the beginning of the journey, but yeah, that was like to kickstart. Like, okay, so that's cool. And before then, were you signed to a label? Yeah, no, 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 no. I did with really, I mean, motivation solo. I did with him again solo. But right now you are with SJW, right? No, right now it's all Red Eye, man. Can't you see? Isn't it obvious? We're talking about Red Eye. You dropped an 
EP. That was in 2019, right? Yeah. Red Eye. What was the EP about? Okay, uh, I dropped Red Eye the EP. So Red Eye is actually a name I got from the hood back then, uh, 2013, 2012. They're about so because then my love for my love for the hustle and because I'm the kind of person that wants to, that I enjoy I enjoy the the process rather I even enjoy the process more than the success so you see because every step serves a purpose so me I had to take my thing step by step step by step and every, uh, and then I was doing like two different jobs I, I work at the block industry during the day and during the night I go for my live band singing and everything and people were like ah bro you know the sleep so they were like ah read I read I read I you know the sleep you know the sleep so it was a two thing for me so that EP was just for the ghetto kids and letting you know that you have to be fearless read I entirely it's it's being fearless so this your red eye movement now is is this a label or like is it just a management thing or you have started uh, like you said movement okay it's a movement yeah do you have any other acts on board uh i don't i don't have any act and i'm not planning to sign any act because i'm not a record label and i'm not planning to be a record label this is a movement this is whether you are from east from west from north from south or even from other record label you can still join the movement it's a family thing uh, that's that's cool recently um, a Twitter user was like, um, Victor A.D. wrote Davido's Jowo and stuff like that. Do you have anything to say concerning that? Okay. <laughs> well, that was so funny because I got to see that when I woke up in the morning and I was like, and my manager called me, I was like, because me, I'm not the social, social uh, if I say social, <laughs> social media kind of person. So my, my, my manager called me and he was like, ah, bro, what's up? What's happening? This and this and this and that. I just saw it, I was like, initially I never took it seriously. I was like, ah, boom, now everybody knows it's a lie that I didn't write your whole for I mean, the video. So if I, then why, and me, I'm not a cloud chaser, I don't, I don't talk too much. And on a normal day, I don't reply, but I had to do that because of the video. Because at the end of the day, he's a friend to me. I wouldn't watch anybody jeopardizing what someone else has worked for and wouldn't say and wouldn't say anything about it. So I had to like address the whole matter. But that one was a big fat lie. I don't know who came up with that stuff, but that was so inconsiderate. <laughs> inconsiderate. You have a new song out now, Olo Fofo. What what's this record about? Okay, uh uh like everybody knows my music is for the oppressed and not for the oppressor so you see all of is just like uh it's more like telling you to be fair like this song i think is self-explanatory nothing they shock me again nothing they move me again i've i've grown past that stage where anyone will try to force me to do the things i i don't want to do or do the things that i'm not that I do want to do in my heart, you get my point. So it has to be fearless. It has to be a fearless movement from now on. And everybody has to take responsibility for their actions. I wouldn't wake up one morning and tell you that, ah, now because of this person, I make a new progress. That's what's going to be a lie. Whenever you hear me say that, just know I'm under duress or influence. <laughs> 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 you get, I will never wake up any day and give excuse for my uh, misfortune or failure or anything, I will take responsibility for it. Because at the end of the day, everybody feels, so I don't know why you should feel like Jagaban or anything. And the song is doing pretty well right now. So when should we expect the musical video? Uh, musical video? Uh, musical video is coming soon. It's coming soon pretty soon. How soon? I can't really tell you how soon. You know, this... You can just give a date. We will not the actual date. Which month? Is it this month? Uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Okay. So um, you have an upcoming project, Nothing to Prove. Is that an EP or an album? It's an EP. An EP. Okay, can you give us a rundown? Like, what, um, how many tracks does it house? house? Uh, okay, I'll tell you. Uh, we have six tracks in it. Okay. Any collaborations? Ah, I won't tell you that. <laughs> you, know, you know your fans are anticipating the release. Uh, there, there are going to be collaborations, though, but I can't, I can't categorically tell you that this is who I want to collaborate with or this. I want it to be a surprise package, just like... But you can just give us one act that is on that project. Um, uh, I would have loved to, but... I... The first one of the <laughs> Okay, I think you should, you should search for E. E, E, E. Yeah, E. E is enough. <laughs> We anticipate that. So, what what, what is the um, nothing to prove? I know the name 
the name explains a lot, but you can just give us a rundown about uh, uh, that. Nothing to prove is Victor Ed or anybody connected to Victor Ed or the Red Eye Movement. Uh, not in a hurry to prove anything to anybody. I'm not in a competition with anybody, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. I'm not here to justify anything or to make you feel good or good or sad about me. So it's just me being myself and doing it from the bottom of my heart. So in the future, who would you likely love to collaborate with? Uh, I, I'm, uh, this future we the talk, so nobody knows tomorrow. A future of <laughs> tomorrow. If it be later in the evening. Well, well, I don't, I don't think I have anybody in mind. The way I vibe, my music for me is spiritual. So if I'm vibing and I feel like I need to put you on, then I'll just do it. Okay, if you are to share a stage with an artist, who would that be? Ah, I think I, I think it would be Jay Z. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jay Z. Aside music, if you aren't doing music, what would you be doing right now? Mm, I think I'll be maybe a stylist or so. Or have or I will have my own brand. I love fashion. If 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 there's anything you could change in the music industry, what would that be? I mean, the music industry do right there. I'm not changing anything. <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges? You know, but but uh, on a more serious note, I would like to impart positively in it, and I would want I don't I want it to be not to be a war zone or a competition zone. It should be if I see a young art coming up, it should be more like a blessing to the industry rather than it being a competition, or rather than being scared or ah well, this guy don't come, won't come take my place. Nobody's taking anybody's place. There's space for everybody, so I think it should be more of a blessing. So the whole competition thing and trying to level up or major up to anybody or anything, I think, I think that's the part I will change. So you know, there was a time you were coming up, and the other coming um, up, up and coming out out there. So like, um, what word do you have for them? Like people who look up to you, that get inspired by you. What, what do you have for uh, The thing is that whatever you're doing, just do it with passion and have love for it. And make sure you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't major yourself or rate yourself with anybody because at the end of the day, everybody has their own grace and everybody has their own road to, or their own path to follow. So just stay your lane and follow your path and stay JJ and stay, stay true to yourself and be content with what you have. Right now in the industry, what challenges do you feel independent acts face? Mm, challenges independent acts face. Aside the financial challenges, we know that is a normal, normal stuff. I think I think there's the, the, all these things people call challenges. I think it's the, actually it's more like a normal process and how it's supposed to be uh, when when you are doing the right thing. Uh, because there's one thing I know, there's no, there's no bigger, no, no, if you look, if you want a big success, you have a big trouble. So I think most of all these things is just normal, it's just a normal route. But, and by the time you start seeing them as challenges here and there and there, I think you get the whole thing wrong. And I think majoring yourself, like I said, majoring yourself with somebody else and comparing yourself with somebody else, I think that's the issue, the, whoever that is independent should take that off his head. Because you know if you know if you ever work, you know if you ever be like me, I know if you ever be like you. So I'm on me, I know they see any challenges, I just do my thing. So what what has been your most memorable performance? Oh, I think that that should be collaboration twenty is it twenty eighteen, yeah. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, collaboration twenty eighteen. And collaboration 2018 and the O2 Arena. But for me, it's the collaboration 2018 because then I got my videographer crying, and everybody around me they were just like, then I did with him again, and I saw people in, like uh, the audience, they were just crying, and my videographer, that guy just cried, the video nonsense, the video ground. So that was actually emotional for me. So for the O2 Arena, what happened? Uh, uh, the O2 Arena, it's just Victory performing at the O2 Arena, like it's a big deal, bro. Okay, so what's the best advice you have ever been given? Uh, I think I think the best advice is uh, is for me not to blame anyone for my misfortune and take responsibilities for my action. Okay. 
So talking about the internet, how do you feel it has promoted the music business? Uh, it has really gone a long way because I used to remember then, uh, imagine how you have to travel, how your song have to travel from one country to another with just CD play. So we never, we don't get your CD, no go hear your song, you get my point. But now everybody has access to the internet from young, old, small, big, fat, slim, tall, short. So, so let's just get things a little bit lighter. Can you, can you stay a day without your smartphone? Uh, I think I can. What's the weirdest uh, message I've gotten from a fan? Ah, um, uh, I saw one. I'm not going to lie. I saw one this morning while I was coming. Uh, I, I thought uh, they sent a couple. They sent a couple of the same. I guess the same person has sent a couple of messages to me. Jamie Zafa. You get what just saying? Uh, it was almost like the the person was actually creating the picture in, uh, in her head. And it was almost like we had to, you know how that, that kind of thing. She was talking to me like I like I respond, like no, like I'm responding. I'd be like, ah, this thing we did yesterday, ah, oh, I like you, go to bed well. I was just like, what the <laughs> series of messages. And it was almost like she was sending the message, like if she say hi, she's going to say, send the next message, like I responded, like I said, I'm fine. They say, okay, I know you're well, how is everything going? Hope you are, as in, I was so... Um, I was confused, and he and James has actually told me something like that before. So the guy had to come to his own DM to confirm. I don't know what they've been talking about. Maybe now this guy sent me give them try. Last last, last time, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't collect small things from my back. <laughs> so now that you're in the public eye, how how do you um, deal with negativity? You know, sometimes you just pick up your phone and you see some negative comments about you. How do you deal with it? Okay, uh, and well, the thing is that people must talk at the end of the day. So if nobody talks about you, like Tufa said, if nobody talks about you, then that means you're nobody. So me, I don't see any, I don't think any man's comment or any man's opinion about my life can actually change a thing from what God wants it to be. So. Do you have any upcoming shows we should look out for? Uh, well, if you talk about show this period, now government will find you. <laughs> 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 you talk about event, upcoming event. I don't want anybody to spoil my date. I keep it to myself. <laughs> so finally, on your album, what should your fans expect? On, on your EP, rather, what should they expect? Uh, just expect greatness and expect Victor Eddie moving from one level to another level. Okay, your final words for them. I love everybody and trust nobody but love everybody. Yeah.